Check, check. One, two, three. Go ahead with your bad self, Nima. Check, check. check. Get away from my meat, Peanut. Okay, check, do, check. Your, do your normal volume. Normal volume. This is how I talk normally when I'm at normal volume. Okay, okay, okay. All right, welcome one and all to Freedom Fiends Live. I am Nima Vidati, hailing from the great state of Texas in the beautiful city of Austin in the hill country. On the other end, we've got uh, Michael W. Dean in Wyoming. How you doing, Michael? Good, yeah, I'm an American, but it's an accident of birth. I'm really a stateless human. Ah, yes. I'm also a Merkin, uh, and I pronounce it Merkin. correctly. I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> two syllables. Wait, three syllables. Mer, no, two syllables. Merkin. Merkin. That's what I am. Well, Merkin is also a wig for your pu- your chest, isn't it? Uh, I think it was your pubis, actually. Okay. Yes. Okay. It was, so. a, it was a wig for, yeah, yeah. Just in case you want it to be nice and lush down there, you know, styles change throughout history. And at one point, you wanted it to be nice and lush. But at the same time, you wanted to shave so you didn't have lice. So uh, the market taking care of even your personal grooming needs uh, in your down there's. Yeah, and we don't call it the free market anymore because that's uh, well, it's explained on our glossary page if you want to go. It's just called the market because if it's not the market, if it's not the market, it's not free. Like what exactly. Republicans and Democrats say about we love the free market. No, they don't. They wouldn't jail people no. for selling crack if they did, among other things, <laughs> and tax people for selling weed. Right, right. And not only do they not love the free market, else. but but they don't love the market in general because uh, what really does the government, the federal government, the state government, government in general, uh, there's very few things they let the market uh, take hold and, and, and be the top dog uh, in society. Usually they, they have some type of government intrusion, whether it be something like licensing uh, or regulatory bodies. Um, they, they very rarely let the market transactions take place. But whenever there is a market transaction, uh, it's free because market transaction is defined by a free voluntary exchange between two entities, you know, one or more people on e- either side. So I have two suggestions for the ep- name of the episode today. One is the goal of the Freedom Fiends is to reduce the demand for government until it drowns itself in the bathtub. Which <laughs> is a take so upset. Yes. Nobody which is doesn't a take like off me. On somebody wants some some small Gro- government. Grover Norquist. Yeah. Grover what, Norquist. Do you, what do you say? Yeah. What do you say? Uh, he's, he, he says, I want government to be so small I can drown it in a bathtub. Uh, paraphrasing, but I'm pretty sure that's pretty close to what he said. And we don't want to come near government or touch it or try to change it in any way. We just <laughs> we don't want, want to, to reduce its, its status herpes. <laughs> we, we want to reduce the demand for it to the point where it just kills itself in the bathtub. <laughs> eh, nobody loves me. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's one choice. The yeah. other well, choice. Well, it sounds ridiculous and funny, but that's true, right? I mean, if yeah, nobody yeah. wants a government, then a government doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And, you don't uh, have to drown it at that point. At that point, it just ceases to exist. Its its own career gets ended. You don't have to even touch yeah. it then. Where uh, the other one is is more serious, but I like it too. We, and we'll use one. Whatever we don't use today, we'll use another time. The other one is uh, uh, what is the other one? I don't remember. Oh, nah. um, yeah, I'm I'm doing great yeah. here, live radio. <laughs> Good job. Okay, Michael. it's the other one is anything any government says is hate speech. Ah, that's a really good one. And explain that's why. possibly the title of the, well, why don't you explain why it's yours? But how I would explain it. Because I don't what need I to, because you think like I do. <laughs> when I first read it, um, what I was thinking was, yeah, that's so obvious and nobody says it, but uh, the government can do no net positive. There's there's nothing good the government can do. And when a liberal or a statist or a conservative tries to say, well, we need the government to do this, what the government has to do in order to do that it's is hateful. T- <laughs> yeah, it's hate- it's hateful because they have to take money away from others through taxation, and and they also have to force people into patterns of behavior that they wouldn't otherwise want to do, which is also hateful. Uh, if you want to imagine how it works in real life, just imagine the government instead of giving them all this, um, you know, godlike status that most people do, just take that away and think of them as just a group of local thugs uh, or a big group of mafia thugs, and then think of the action that they're doing. So if a big group of mafia thugs took your money so that they could donate it to the business next door because the business next door was failing that would be hateful you would feel yeah. hated and, that'd be and, and, far more hateful than what's called hate speech you know right hate speech and like the definition of hate speech has gone from you know what could probably be called hate speech like saying that certain types of people ought to be wiped off the face of the earth or shipped off somewhere to like you know now it's hate speech if you say like any number of things that aren't even necessarily hateful just like you know someone from a church saying i don't like homosexuals you know that's <laughs> that's an opinion that's not hate speech that's right, not right. Well, even did, calling for an action did you see the episode of south park about hate speech 
No, but I love uh, homosexuals. I just want to make that clear. We're not one of those, uh, you know, kind of. I don't right, love them. Right. I just uh, they're whatever. You know, it's like well, guys with blue you, shirts or red shirts or yellow shirts. I don't care. If you if you commit a crime against somebody, well, I, I guess the South Park thing was about hate crime. But but the idea is, it doesn't Crime's matter. Crime what's, doesn't matter what you're. What's thinking. in your heart, right? Right. If you and, and in the South Park episode, Cartman like threw a brick at Token or punched Token. You know, the Token black kid. Yeah. And uh, and he was prosecuted for a hate crime. And they're like, no, Cartman hates everybody. <laughs> it has nothing to do with <laughs> hate crime. And if I if if somebody hurts you, it's because they hate you. If if they if they think that low of you to where they'll commit physical violence on you, there's some there's some form of hate there, regardless of whether it's they hate you because you're black or they hate you just because you're you so speaking about the connection between hate crimes and hate speech or hate speech and hate crimes i want to talk about a movie i saw but first i want to talk about another movie i saw because uh you know i always mention movies and stuff and you're like what's that and everyone goes oh my god Nima doesn't know that and you you mentioned half baked and i'm like i haven't seen that so i went and watched it uh could be better it's kind of funny it's got its moments uh dave chappelle actually sh- said in inside the actor studio interview that um the original script was great but the producers kind of messed it up and made it into a weed mm. movie for kids well i was stoned and a kid when i watched it and i don't think i've watched it since so um it worked for my demographic you know <laughs> 10 12 years ago whatever yeah i do like that there is a character named squirrel master in it who's a crazy old guy and um he's played by tommy <laughs> yeah. chong did you know that uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I knew that. I knew. I knew who Cheech and Chong were when I was a kid. Man, they they yeah. still had cult status. Okay. And then the the guy that plays the the the, the Hispanic dude who goes by the name of Scar, the ironic name of Scarface, because he's really like goofy and happy and mellow. Uh, he actually plays a really Scarface type dude later, about ten years later on the Shield. He plays a really heinous uh criminal mastermind drug dealer who has a warehouse full of grenades that he likes to have his his men throw through the windows of other drug dealers homes mm-hmm. yeah and, uh, and he's sort of a mix of the two in weeds where he's really heinous but he's got a sense of humor about yeah it. yeah and uh in in the shield though he's tortured to death by vic Mackey for about 24 hours and it's pretty much the most heinous thing i've ever seen on tv and you said well what about on breaking bad when uh chicken man gets blown up and i'm like but that's kind of funny he straightens his tie before he dies you know Mm-hmm. It's nothing funny yeah. about Garza's death, man. It's yeah. Plus, I guess in the Chicken Man scene, right? Uh, I get uh, why are we calling him Chicken Man. The, the El Pollo Loco, the the mastermind behind the the meth cartel. Uh, he's done some pretty heinous things. Yeah, and he's killed some kids. It's it's, it's kind of like a self defense. I don't remember the exact end of that season and how it worked, but wasn't he on his way to kill somebody? In yeah, and you know, I mean that that brings up whole things of like legally that wouldn't be self defense. And you'd be, go to prison for life for doing it in an old folks home, but uh, and you'd be responsible for the guy who helped you and blew himself up. But you know, it brings into that whole kind of like uh, preemptive self defense. I mean, Chicken Man isn't the kind of guy you can stop from killing you by pulling out a gun. You know? Yeah, but the act itself—if you break it down just to the act itself, right? It was the old the old man uh, who had a bomb on himself or some kind of some kind of way to make himself explode, and and Chicken Man, El Pollo Loco guy, comes in there to kill the old man. But the old man, instead of getting killed, he blows himself up, which also kills the chicken man. So, which legally, I mean, you I, know, I, I, you'd be responsible I for his death. But who would be responsible for his death? Walt. The old. Why? The, the, it was it was the old man's decision, right? Didn't the old man do it on purpose? Uh, it was like the old man was. Like I a mean, do you want to even get into this kind of, this this discussion? I don't even want to talk about the moral legitimacy of any of this let alone the legal implications. If you convince <laughs> someone to blow themselves up in an old folks home to kill some other dude, uh, they would cry. They would get you with all the crimes they possibly could. And one of them is you'd be responsible. You you've committed a felony where someone else died. So you'd be charged with, with both murders. Mm, yeah, that's how they do so. it. Do you, you, do you live in yeah. such a lib pair that you don't realize? Do you think like, well, your honor, I was acting in self-defense and morally, if I say these magic words, things will go my way. You're not a sovereign well, citizen, man. You know that. Oh, I, I completely know that. But the thing is, for our sake of discussion and part of the work we try to do is try to explain things, how they would work in the absence of I know. the state. In but the I, think you have so to in, be, I think you have to be clearer of the way things are about. and the way things should be. And you weren't. You were like, well, that would be self-defense. And I'm like, not legally in any country, you know, not in America, not in New well, Mexico. When I, Okay, my bad. But when I say would be, that's what I mean. Would be. Would, would be, be in per, our, parentheses, parentheses in lib pair. Okay. Whenever I, I say a, would be. I have a lot to talk about that really doesn't have anything to do with that. Okay. Good for you. All right. We Conflict talk about is it. the essence of drama. You could talk about it very soon. And if you want to hear what Michael has to say, stay with us. 
worms. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from my mother's ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum Vibe had come. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding The Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. Well, how about this? Why don't you have the discussion that's the side discussion that I didn't want to talk about? <clears throat> and then when we come back, I'll, I have notes. I have scripts for today, man. Scripts. Okay, so here's my thing. The old man owns his own life, right? I mean, self-ownership is is part of the central principle behind the non-aggression principle. So the old man decided uh, through negotiations, yes, and Walt tried to convince him, but it was the old man's decision in the end, and I don't remember him being coerced. He hated El Pollo Chicken Guy. He hated and wanted revenge upon El Pollo Chicken Guy. Um and so the old man killing himself wasn't an immoral act, uh, either through the old man because the old man chose to end his own life or through Walt because Walt just tried to convince him of it. Um, El Pollo Chicken Man was on his way to murder the old guy. I don't remember the details of it, but if he had started the process of murdering the old guy, then the old guy was well within morality to uh, push the button on the bomb, right? Oh, I have no comment, man. You have no comment? Okay. Well, I don't know, that, man. I mean, you really want to sit here and talk. Of it. You really want to talk my of uh, on a public thing about like, well, bombs are okay to use. And dude, they're going to kick down your fucking door for even having that thought. Experience. I'm not saying they're okay to use. I'm saying theoretically, <laughs> if we look at it through a philosoph- philosophical lens. In lib pair, bombs will be okay. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> kind of pulling your chain, but. Uh... Yeah. Well, anyway. you know, it also gets into like preemptive violence which is what states do which we say isn't good which we say is not ethical well you know? i mean that, if- that's why that's why I, i'm saying i don't remember the exact details but in my mind uh the old the el pollo chicken guy started the process of murdering the old guy so well, so his, i don't the, remember the, the details the- how would he start the process like he was going to stab him and he had pulled out the knife and was going to cut his throat or oh, he was oh, going to oh, poison right, him through gas right. or something. And so he turned on the gas and the old man was about to die from the gas. I forget how it exactly no, he, worked. But- he had a syringe. His, the black dude, uh, his henchman, uh, had a syringe of something he was going to kill him with. Right. So he had started the process. <clears throat> I yeah. think if he if he had put if the syringe had broke the skin, I guess the the process would yeah. have started. I also think it's a really um, dubiously ethical way to kill somebody because you probably would kill any of the old folks in either of the rooms on either side. Remember that sweet old lady that was waving at Walt out the window when he was in the back. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, I guess you would have to weigh if if <clears throat> how big the explosion was and if if the walls were thick enough to contain it within one room. I mean, if it's concrete walls, it's like a some pipe bomb, man. You can't you can't determine where it's going to go. Mm. Okay, yeah, I guess that's something uh, else to discuss. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think it's important to well, have Walt's, these conversations Walt's a really about- selfish guy who doesn't really have any code of ethics of self-defense. He is all about him and his family. Yeah. Mark S. Mark S. says the discussion is meaningless to those who haven't seen the show. Well, go watch the show because yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, think about, like, Walt's morals. I mean, he started, he got into the meth trade by blackmailing Jesse. He basically said, you partner with me or I'm turning you into my brother. Hmm. We're about to go on in about 30 seconds. All right. 
<clears throat> so. So I'm gonna yeah. go ahead and turn the feed on, listen to it's the feed, on, and we'll yeah. come back. Yeah. How can we trust? Uh, why don't you bring us back years, since you have things to talk about? Silver from Midas okay. Resources. Are you put off by me? You should too. Today? No, no. Okay. No, keep, keep, keep up the energy. That's all that matters. Free book title. Right now, even if, the even if we're yelling gold. at each other, I love or you, man. I'm, I'm not yelling at you. I have Christmas presents for you Again, too. That, that you don't have to putting on a show. You don't have to get any Christmas presents back. But we got some cool for you. I hate it when people say that. But here you go. We got after Bang Brothers. We're on. Well, actually, I already gave you. I already gave you that mixer for Christmas. That's Facebook. Now, no. Yeah, Freedom Fiends. Yeah, Freedom Fiends. Freedom Fiends. Freedom Fiends. That's how you bring us back. No, you're supposed to be. Hey, this is Freedom Fiends Live. Thank in the you for morning. Joining us. In the morning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a big discussion and argument um, on the break, which got recorded. So if you want to go listen later, those of you celebrating Shanaka, Hanukkah, Hanukkah. Yeah. Somebody said yeah. that they can't listen today because it's Hanukkah. So. I guess Hanukkah. no no enjoyment before sunset or something. How's that work? Hmm. I don't know, man. We should. They they said that in the chat room. I'm curious. What, yeah. No. Can you not was, do certain things during Hanukkah. Well, you're supposed to fast, and I think you're not supposed to. Um, well, uh, today's episode I would say is kind of the opposite of enjoyable. So you could probably listen and not enjoy yourself. <laughs> well, maybe it's not an enjoyment thing. Maybe if if it's fasting, it's you can't ingest anything, and that includes through your ears through uh, audio. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. That'd be Maybe interesting should, if it was that way. Well, after I'm done talking, people can call in. Although they can't really call in and explain it because if they're really in the know, they're not listening, I think. Oh. Uh, hmm. So I do have a Christmas present for you. I want to get back to these movies I'm talking about. And I know you hate it when people say, I got a present for you, but I don't want people to, you know, then I say, you don't have to give me anything back. You hate that. But I hate that. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like, okay, you, hey, look, look at this awesome thing I did for you. Hey, but you don't have to do awesome things for me either. You no, know, you don't. If you don't want um, to. And I'm actually giving you something sure. I don't want that I was going to throw away, but it's pretty cool. So I'm sending it to you. Um, okay. DJ and I wrote this song. It's called Have Yourself a Compromised Christmas because I literally hate Christmas. I hate it. It's got to do with bad childhood memories. And even without that, I think at this point in my life, I would not celebrate it. It's, it's a time that gets in my way of doing business with other people. Uh, as you said, at all businesses, the people with seniority that know how to run things get two weeks off, so everything is run by the idiots who just got hired. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. my memory, at least. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so... And I just, I don't like it. I don't like the forced commercialism. I don't like the blah, blah, blah. I kind of like the pretty lights, but it was like we started to decorate the whole house, whole house, and I was like, you know what? I don't like this. Let's... And we got in this kind of, not argument, but like, I was like, it hurts me to do this. And she was like, well, I like it, but if it hurts you, let's not do any of it. And I'm like, well, let's do a little of it. So we did a mm -hmm. little tiny bit of, you know, put some bulbs out front and then put some lights up inside, but not much. And so I had some cool decorations left over. I was going to throw away, but I'm sending them to you. Um, so mm -hmm. it's, oh, okay. it's basically we, we want to reduce the size of Christmas until we can drown it in the bathtub. <laughs> well, you do. I have a love hate relationship. Sometimes I really like Christmas and I, I really do love certain parts, but uh, it's just a lot of work when you're a grown ass man, you got a lot of stuff to do. I know. I mean, I got to go shop and put to buying you gifts. I kind of like Hannibal Burris, who's a hilarious comedian, probably my favorite of, of newer comedians. And he's got this bit. He's like, you know, why don't I just give you the amount of money that I like you? Like, oh, I really like you. Here's 50 bucks. I kind of like you. Here's five bucks. I hate you. Here's a bill for 50 bucks. You owe me. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's Christmas. That's all I want to say. And that's all I'm going to say about Christmas till after. That's all it's I done. have to say about if you that. Can, if you can, you, if you can, if you have Christmas stuff later, different days, you can do it. But I'm really done with it. I'm over it. What do you think about the concept of too commercialized? I'm curious about that. And that's important because, you know, we're anarchist, libertarian, capitalists. We should have something different to say than us. Well, yeah, I don't I don't mind that people are buying and selling stuff. Um, I mind that I am under pressure by society to buy stuff for people that would because I like to give people stuff a lot. I give a lot of presents to people I really care mm -hmm. about. And yeah, uh, you do, you know. I don't necessarily. I can't necessarily afford to do it all at in one t at one time. I do it throughout the year, and it's more special and it's more personalized. Uh, you know, would you rather have a uh, you know cool tube rack mount preamp compressor for me in July, or you know a tie on Christmas? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, it, it also goes back to you know one of the things about economics is. 
uh, you spend your own money way better and more efficiently than you spend uh, than other people can spend money for you. So if I'm buying you a gift, I might not get something as close to your true desires than if yeah. You went and out when to you're shopping for yourself. Christmas, you have to shop for a bunch of you're you're like kind of squeezed by society and a weirdo if you don't do it to buy a bunch of stuff for a bunch of people, and you don't really have time, money, or time to put enough like the real kind of true gift stuff planning you put into gifts throughout the year yeah you know yeah it's yeah, like and, and, you're and checking there, off a list right and there is sort of a whole bubble of goods i feel like are created just for that so they can be token gifts that don't really make the the re recipient that happy but that somebody just has to buy because oh i have to buy well, something for them retail stores plan around that i mean literally like they call black friday about black friday because it's the day that they go into the black you know it's the day that they depend <laughs> on literally i mean right, like right. the economy would fail if in a way for a while if everybody stopped buying christmas presents mm -hmm, but that's mm -hmm. not going to happen it's not gonna be a problem there's, there's also a horrible thing i find i don't know if it happens that much anymore but i remember when i was a kid um inevitably at christmas it, this was mostly with video games there'd be um a, a, a shittier video game company uh that would put out a product with a very similar name <laughs> to like to like the game you really wanted like bone i storm. really wanted bone i really storm. wanted <laughs> what's bone storm oh it's the shit it's the thing that bart wants on the simpsons oh. where he shoplifts and uh, uh -huh. his his dad Homer and Marge get him something that's called like Bone Quest. That's not Bone yes. Storm. Yes, that's, it, exactly that would happen I just to me like regularly the name on Bone Christmas. Storm. To where, to where one, one, one Christmas, I, I wanted I wanted Soul Caliber and um, I wanted NFL Two K, uh, and and instead I got Soul Fighter and, and NFL Blitz Two Thousand. Oh no! What, I was Bart, like, what Bart gets is Lee Trevino's Putting Challenge instead of Bone Storm. <laughs> it's a golf that's game. It. That's that's right. And at the end, he he tries to play it, and he logs on with a name like Butt Munch, and then, uh, like sets the level of the golf like to the top, and it and it's Lee Trevino saying that is too high, and he like hits the ball, and it like goes into the parking lot, and then he turns the game off. <laughs> yeah, like he just tries yeah. to do the most maxed out Bart thing he can do with it, and it's like okay, yeah, I hit a ball yeah. into a golf parking lot, I'm done. Nice, nice. So Speaking I. Go ahead. I have some Christmas gift suggestions for people. Uh, if you know anybody who's an aspiring podcaster or uh, radio personality like us, I saw three movies. One is Anchorman, which uh, just see it. Yes. It's fun. It's got Christina Applegate, you know, my friend Martin's wife playing a sexy lady. Mm -hmm. And um, Nima's probably seen it. And it's got pretty much every comedian in the world in it yes. in a big um, yes. brawl in a parking lot where people get their arms cut off. It, it, it's it's almost required for news reporters of my generation to have yeah. watched it and reference it regularly in the newsroom. Okay, but there's two, things, there's two things that are a lot more useful and not as common in pop culture. One is um, a movie called Heckler, which is by Jamie Kennedy. It's a documentary about ah, hecklers. Uh -huh. It's a documentary yeah. about hecklers and critics. And this isn't really a spoiler because it's a documentary, but um, he actually finds his worst critics and gets them in a room and like makes them feel bad for what they've done. And they're all like 17 year old pimply boys who have these really popular <laughs> websites. And then there's a guy in Germany, some filmmaker in Germany who actually has a boxing match in Canada with a few of them and like beats the crap out of them in the ring. It's pretty funny. Wow. wow. But it's really good. It's yeah. a good movie for anybody who does something in public and gets bummed out about haters. I mean, it, it, I it'll, that. yeah. You need, we yeah, need to wa watching them get watching the pimply teenage kids get beat up. I think that's the whole point of the movie, right? That's like catharsis for yeah, any content it, producers. And it also like puts it in a perspective of like really famous people that you know and respect going like, God, this shit, this crap ruins my day, man. So yeah, we're yeah. not alone. So we'll have an and even that's on better Netflix streaming too. Yeah, it always comes up yeah. in my you should watch queue. Yeah. So and I have some criticism of that movie, and he says he likes okay criti like constructive criticism, but not haters. So I have some constructive criticism of that movie when we get back. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Freedom Fiends Radio. Click on the blue Listen link at FreedomFiends.com, streaming live every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast U.S. time. 
on Freedom Fiends Radio at freedomfiends.com. The Freedom Fiends agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Badati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. You're listening to the Freedom Fiends podcast. Freedom Fiends is now available for 24-7 streaming to your iPhone, Android phone, or other chromed robot turd. Click on the streaming audio link on freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. I kind of feel like um, media is so disposable or not disposable, but like you watch it streaming and then watch eight more things streaming that like Mm -hmm. saying you should buy someone a gift of like a DVD is kind of like, really? That's kind of not a very good gift. (laughs) I I agree not to. Yeah. Excepting for guns and weed, the road to freedom and gun (laughs) training for for non-aggression, which are really getting, they're getting so many downloads on torrent man on the torrent seed box that's what we want man that's what we want yeah i mean we made, of- we made it so people would watch it not so that we would be billionaires or yeah something, i mean there's know? a lot of people downloading uh all of our stuff you know all of our podcasts but there's way more people downloading the which are much bigger files the dvd isos basically because dvds cost money and podcasts don't i think mm-hmm. you know dvd mm-hmm. in the torrenting world we're like the more oh, hold on. we're gonna come back like soon all right where the more stuff you have on the hard drive, the cooler you are. DVDs are cooler than podcasts. Right. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> All right. It's Freedom Fiends live on LRN and on our own streaming server, too. You get to hear our mindless chatter in between the breaks. If you go to our feed, just go to freedomfiends.com. Click on the Listen Now tab on the right of the screen. Yeah. Um, so It's, it's kind of like on The Simpsons where they show the satellite feed of between the newscast where you see the newscaster... The, the thin man in the suit on TV leaning over and making himself vomit into a bucket and going, I'm so fat. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so we were talking about disposable media, and um, I was telling Michael, me and my wife like to sit on the couch and just go through uh, like internet junk food, like Lol Cats and uh, Geek Phil. And Lame Book is also a really funny one. And Michael's kind of like, whatever, dude. But uh, here's here's my favorite. Here's my favorite from Lame Book. Um, cause l- what lame book does is it shows you how dumb people can be and by proxy makes you feel really good about yourself. So here's sure Vaughn's one of sure Vaughn's statuses that somebody, uh, captured from Facebook. Sure Vaughn says, I think Titanic is fake because comma, how do they record it when they are like all dying in water? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then her friend Angelica yeah. says, it, "Her friend yeah. Angelica says it's a remake of what actually happened, isn't it?" And then Siobhan <laughs> responds, "So the people in the movie aren't alive?" Question mark. <laughs> and those people can vote. Um, well, actually, that's kind of something that that is pointed out in that movie. Heckler uh, is basically that what what used to be heckling is now done on the internet and called yeah. you know reviews <laughs> <laughs> right, right and and the people that get the most popular doing it have the most scathing reviews so jamie kennedy said you know i love constructive criticism i just hate it when they go this guy sucks and should be wiped off the face of the earth so my constructive criticism with that movie is the sound levels between interviews are not good i would have done a much better job hire me next time or nema um it looks like a rough cut it sounds like a rough cut and i don't understand that because you know, I mean, the guy is, like talks about aspiring to be the next Adam Sandler. I got Adam Sandler's sound guy, Dave Bach, uh, B-A-C-H, not B-O-C-K, who's also my friend and a sound engineer. I got Adam Sandler's sound guy, the guy who does sound mix on every one of Adam Sandler's movies. Uh, I paid him five grand to do, you know, $20,000 worth of sound work on my independent uh, Hubert Selby documentary. So why... Adam, Adam, uh, Jamie Kennedy must know some Hollywood sound guys. He's been in some big Hollywood, you know, disposable movies. Why doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he hire one of them? You know, why, why would that make him be the next Adam Sandler though? 
Well, he talks about he's compared to Adam Sandler a lot in reviews, and it comes up a couple ah. times in the movie. But you know, he made movies like like the Straight Out of Malibu or Malibu's Most Wanted. I mean, that's a big Hollywood budget movie. Why couldn't he get the guy who did that and say, "Hey, you know, you do me a favor. I'll do you a favor next time. Let me slip you some money. I've got some. Do sound mix on this little documentary I made. Hmm? It's a yeah. really good documentary. It's really good. Heckler, Heckler, yeah. So go watch it. I can actually so, watch that one. Maybe I will actually watch. You that should. One so I, it, can have I want you to, to watch that it. one because you will feel better about haters. And I know they've bugged you in the yeah. past. So, yeah. And actually speaking of dispos- disposable income, when I was done watching, um, uh, disposable media or disposable income, disposable Skip media. Things. Uh, okay. when I was done watching half baked, it immediately said, you may also like Beavis and butthead do America. So I watched that again at three in the morning. Nice. I watched it about five nice. times. It's a much, <laughs> much better movie story wise and script wise than uh, half baked. Yeah. yeah. And well, I like that. Mike Judge is awesome. I like that the punchline at the end is that Bill Clinton makes Beavis and Butthead honorary ATF members. That sounds about right <laughs> to me. <laughs> Doesn't it, though? So getting back to hate speech, uh, there's Clinton. another movie I Sorry. really want to recommend that's good for aspiring podcasters and radio people is a film called Talk Radio, which is uh, made by what's the director that did JFK? Stone, um, you know his name, Stone. Uh, Stone, yeah. Come on, Stone's his, his last name. name. Yeah, what's know, his name? It's probably. Yeah, I, I, I knew until you started questioning it. Then, then you're saying, dumb. You're, on, you're dumb. You're dumb. Spread to me. Let's. Yeah, um, Stone. Um, Alan Stone. Google it. No, no, it's not Man, Alan. This is really not something to get hung up on. Anyway, there's this movie, Sharon Stone. No, that's not it. <laughs> Talk radio. It stars Alec Baldwin as basically Jack. You know the same thing. All, he plays Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone. All of her stones. Uh, yeah, it play. It stars Alec Baldwin, young, sexy Alec, Alec Baldwin, playing um, basically Jack from Thirty Rock, but not funny. You know, he's a he's the network executive of a bunch of radio stations, and the story is it's it's one of of Stone's early movies, like before he really got famous, and it's based on very roughly on the life of Alan Berg, who was a talk radio guy who uh, was Jewish and was murdered by some white supremacists for being loud mouthed and Jewish. And they didn't like that. So, Jeez. and you know, the difference in, there's a big difference though, in the real life to this movie is that Alan Berg was kind of a quiet, non-confrontational guy. And his producers were like, you need to yell at these guys that call in more. It makes for better radio. Whereas mm. the guy in this movie is just over the top and Alec Baldwin and his other producer are trying to get him to be more, you know, mainstream because they're trying to get him to go national. So, hmm. but he's, hmm. he, it's a really good thing that shows the, <clears throat> the, ex, the extreme end of hecklers, you know, of like, if you put yourself out there and anybody can hear you of what can happen, it's kind of a scary movie actually. Hmm. Talk radio. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good movie. It's also for streaming on Netflix. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. Um, so are we done with our, our movie talk now, or do we have other? Yeah, I mean, I could have got, I could have gotten this all out in the first two minutes, but it went good places. I liked it. Mm, squirrel Master, man, places. Squirrel Master. Tommy Chong plays Squirrel Master, and you know how old guys like squirrels, so that's a good name for an old man. Yeah, yeah. I still don't get why old guys like squirrels, but I guess they're old. You'll have, so I you'll know. You'll know when you get there. One day, my son, you will know what it's like to love a squirrel. It's because you've had more decades of humans disappointing you, and squirrels are just very reliable. I don't know. I feel like squirrels are disappointing, too. Like when you try to pet them and they bite your finger, that's pretty disappointing. But they're I've reliable. By squirrels. You, it's reliable that they will do that. <laughs> so that's why you don't Is it do it. Re- oh, you don't feel reliable that people will always disappoint you? Yeah, that's why I avoid them. But squirrels, I can, squirrels, I can observe through my window. If I do that with people too long, they start to talk. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, if you work for the NSA, you can do it without anybody feeling, without anybody judging you, right? Well, I want to say hello to the central scrutinizer. He's uh, he's there in the chat room and he's listening today. Hello. Yeah. Hello, scrutinizer. <laughs> yeah. Someone said I should get a kickback from Netflix. I wish they had a like, you know, it's affiliate, a good idea. affiliate system. Yeah. 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 We're not just should, not to sign people up, but like if they watch an individual movie by clicking your link, that'd be good. That's what, that's what I was going to say. Have a link to the movie and you get some kind of, I don't know, credit. Credit actually, towards your, your, your monthly fee. It's actually hard to link a movie on Netflix. I've tried doing it. And then when people click on it, it says like, 
Michael Dean is not logged in. You know, like they don't make it easy like other sites because the link must be specific to your account. Or yeah, something. yeah, it's yeah. weird. Yeah, you don't, weird. you don't want other people logging into your account. Yeah. Although you can have like what two or three people that can log into the same account. No, nah, I think that's a violation of. I don't know. I know that kids get in trouble in college for that. But oh, so okay. I want to talk about something completely different because that's about. Well, it's the opposite of that's computer non privacy. That's like things set to a person. I want to talk about Anonymous, the group Anonymous. I recant everything I said about them. Uh, someone contacted me today uh, by Creepy. Pigeon. Anonymous, by Pigeon. Anonymous contacted you? Maybe. All I wouldn't right. say that. You, you don't, you don't know. That. How would I don't you know? know? <laughs> I don't know. Well, here's the thing. I, <clears throat> I have a very wrong view of Anonymous, and I did, and now I don't. Um, they're not central. Most people who claim to be members aren't. They're mostly wannabes. Mm -hmm. um the the only requirement for so-called membership and there's not even membership but the only the only thing they all have in common the real ones is a hatred of censorship you don't necessarily have to be a hacker he, i mean the guy was like you i listen to you guys i listen to the fiends you guys pretty much are members of anonymous and i'm like i ain't claiming that flag man i'm i'm enough i'm about to get drone enough as it is but uh <laughs> you know he did convince me that we basically you know and I was like, everything I'm seeing from them is not anarchist. It's all about like trying to fix governments. It's all anti-left, never against the right. And until Julian Assange was threatened by Obama, now they're kind of anti-everybody. But, and he said, no, there's a lot of people that are just like you that are ANCAPs that uh, are members of Anonymous and don't necessarily do any hacking, but just it's it's a thing. And I was wrong. So hmm. there. Okay. And so maybe no. it's a category then, but we, we can discuss that more coming up very soon. Well, there's a guy who has a gun to my head. No, I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. They're not like that. Central Scrutinizer has a gun to my head. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidabi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon and IMDb. You can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site, or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiend's message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. Yay. Well, this is from Abby in the chat room. She tells us this. It all makes sense now. Gay marriage and marijuana being legalized on the same day in Washington? Leviticus 20, 13. If a man lays with another man as with a woman, he should be stoned. <laughs> You've just been interpreting it wrong all along. Yes. Yes. Day he should be stoned. As is written, as is will be done. Help get so let it be written. So let it be done. Visit promote.lrn.fm. Yeah. So let it be podcast. So let it be done. Fix and more. Promote.lrn.fm. <laughs> All right, oh, we're back on the fiends. This fiends is alive. the central Report ah! for reindoctrination and relocation immediately. Leave uh, the body yeah. and Michael Dean. Please step okay. out of your domicile. 
Put down your weapons, put down your bombs, and step outside your house and be prepared to be compliantly taken for peaceful re-education. Sure thing, just let me finish my bourbon, I'll be right there. <laughs> just just wait, wait there for me for another few minutes, I'll be out when I'm ready. They have, uh, they have their own drugs at the re-education plant. <laughs> they use Compliacin, man. <laughs> mm, Compliacin and Soma. <clears throat> Delicious. So I saw a really... Um, oh, wait. Did we have anything to finish up on that movie? Or that you said concept? you did, but uh, you did. I don't know. No. You must finish it. Well, I have, an, I, I have the name of this cast. It's State Speech is Hate Speech. That's a lot more concise and it rhymes. Catchy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's bumper sticker worthy. <clears throat> Or a bumper sticker format, at least. I don't know if it's worthy, but it's at least a format. So I saw an NPR headline that said, if you're not, um, it said, add this group to Obama's winning coalition, the religiously unaffiliated. And I was thinking that's such like left, right, bizarro world, normal thinking of if you're not strongly religious, you must be an Obama supporter. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. That's retarded. I'm not strongly religious and I'm not an Obama supporter. And, you know, I was kind of trying to like fit into my head where Ron Paul or to a lesser extent, Gary Johnson fits in all that. And it's basically it's it's the training wheels for anarchy. It's the well, I don't buy the left right paradigm. And both those people are, are stupid, which is the thought you should have. But you should jump immediately to politics is BS. But when you're still kind of not quite there yet, you go, but there is a solution. I can vote for this guy who promises to <laughs> use the government to reduce the size of government, which is um, kind of like, you know, trying to use cancer to cure cancer, I think. But yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, the other thing I find that liberals and other status, various statists think about Ron Paul uh, and something they get wrong is a, a problem with statists is they think that everybody should do what they think is right. Right. That's why they're statists. They think there should be yeah. one rule to rule all. And so they see that Ron Paul's Christian and anti-abortion and they immediately assume that he wants to impose his values on everyone else. The concept that, that Ron Paul says, yeah, I, I personally am anti-abortion, but I don't want the federal government involved. They just that does not compute to them. They're like brain explodes. They're like, what? You believe something and you don't want to point guns at everybody else to force them into your beliefs. People just don't get that. Oh, and um, this entity that contacted me today regarding anonymous, which, uh, you know, I can't say anything ah. else about. Um, it said mm -hmm. that a lot of people in anonymous were Ron Paul supporters, which is good enough for me. I mean, it's I thought they were all Obama supporters. And then I was like. Obama wants to put you all in camps and cut off your weenuses. How could you possibly support him? <laughs> <clears throat> but really, the yeah. the people, a lot of the people who claim to be anonymous are, uh, this entity told me that a lot of them are um, wannabes. And it's kind of like the Hells Angels thing. Like those who say they are, aren't, and those who say they aren't, are. That's mm -hmm. how anonymous mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. Apparently, yeah, according yeah. to some entity that well, contacted well, me this, that... <laughs> yeah, he's he's not a anonymous then, right? If he contacted you and was like, anonymous is this. Maybe it's an FBI agent souping you up for something later. Like, you must do some hacking, Michael Dean. <laughs> I don't know how to do hacking. For anonymous. Yet. All yes. I know is... You must is, hack for us. All I can teach people is like the nuts and bolts basics of uh, doing encrypted email and doing pigeon encrypted, which... Uh, yes. Yes. And this guy had a really good... This guy doesn't use email and uh, contacted me some other way and then got me on pigeon. And it was like, uh, you know, I was like... Can you explain why people that are in the know use pigeon and encrypted and not email? And he said, because uh, when, when the NSA files this conversation, they'll file it as unknown talking encrypted to unknown. Whereas with email, it'll be, they'd file it as Michael Dean talking encrypted to so-and-so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 There's no name. So use pigeon. Pigeon's awesome, man. I seriously yeah. love Pigeon. And, and I, I love it so much that I feel like I don't need to do encrypted email right now. I mean, I guess I guess that was the point you just made. You know? Yeah. I kind of think but, you should just um, so anonymous weirdos can <laughs> – anonymous weirdos. So people <laughs> you don't know, not anonymous, but, uh -huh. uh, you know. The more so tools can, you have at your disposal, well, the more work you can do. Because kind of there's thing. like six people on uh, – on your you know, like three people on your pigeon list, whereas anybody can contact you by by. Uh, but I like I like that though. I, I know like, I like I know, that concept of pigeon that uh, that only people who I have you know. set up to talk yeah. to can talk to me on pigeon. Yeah, I just sent you a bunch of cat like typing 
by pigeon. You know, there's a there's a really funny. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's called like Happy Birds or something. It's a Twitter account, and it's all like gibberish typing. And what it is, they have a picture of how they do it. The guy has a keyboard outside his window on his ledge with like bird food, like suet. You know that gooey kind of bird food they love. Um, like gooped onto the keyboards, and then a photo of birds pecking at it, and that's <laughs> and then he puts what they type on Twitter. It's awesome. You old people, <laughs> that only you would think that was awesome. No, Birds apparently like a half million typing. other, about a half million people think it's awesome, but they're probably all old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that sounds like granny wear to me. Yeah, granny wear. <laughs> so moving along, uh, let's see. I've recanted my statement about Anonymous. I have talked about how doing a podcast will get you killed. Uh, we've talked about the moral ethics of blowing up an old folks home. Decided it wasn't was not ethical. <laughs> that was that was um, me. I'll, I'll I'll take. Well, there it was more nuanced than that. But you can listen to the archives if you want to hear the actual discussion. I wanted to thank Travis York for the forty dollar donation, which is awesome. Twenty dollars to the fiends and twenty dollars to me for uh, user's manual, which is pretty cool. I guess I'm worth as much as the fiends together. No, I don't know. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, we had the Pushy Bottom remix and Bomb Record Love Sucker. Oh, we're talking about bombs again. My band bomb put that up on the torrent feed. So that's there. If you want it, I'm doing something interesting with the mix today. I want to try an experiment. Um, we've been putting these out all mono for a while because mumble, the thing we talk with to each other on is mono, but <clears throat> all of our bumps are stereo and use stereo, use the stereo spectrum to, uh, you know, make it sound cooler. So this mm -hmm. episode I'm going to put up, it's going to be a stereo MP3, but the parts where we're talking are mono, but all the bumps are going to be stereo. So I would love feedback on that and see if you like it. I tried it the other day on a cast. I forgot to mention it, but then I skipped it for a cast and then I'm going to do it this cast. So let me know. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's, I don't know. Maybe it's only audio geeks that will appreciate it i don't know I, I don't think so I, I just know that whenever i make a bump for uh us to use i always use st the stereo spectrum in the production of it and i feel like that work should be acknowledged somehow but it yeah. never is it, it something that sounds really cool stereo uh like electric piano sounds just kind of boring in mono yeah the um the problem is there's probably a bit of sacrifice here because the parts where we're talking probably won't sound quite as good because uh, a mono MP3 at the same bit rate uh, has a little higher quality than a stereo if it's just one channel split both ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So people can let us know. But I think at this point we sound so damn good, it ain't going to make a difference. Mm, yeah, at least I hope so. I hope so. So I paid, um, I paid the streaming server for a year. It was $203. Uh, and there was an F up due to PayPal or Voscast. I'm not sure who. It was like... I'd been saving all the fiends donations and had like 150 bucks and I put in 50 bucks, my own money in my PayPal. So I had $203 and 40 cents, which is what it cost for a year. And we had, we were going month to month, but I decided to put everything to yearly because it's a lot easier for me to do. So on December 6th, it was supposed to go to yearly on December 5th. And I was going to cancel, you know, on the fifth, I was going to cancel our monthly subscription and make it yearly and pay for it for a year because you lose the time when you cancel. So mm -hmm. on the a day early, either PayPal or Voscast, I don't know yet who, um, went ahead and charged us for 16 bucks. So there was 1695 short in my PayPal. So I immediately wrote them an angry letter, then tried to transfer the 17 bucks from my bank into the PayPal. And it said it wouldn't be available for three days. So the only way to rectify this was to get someone to donate like 17 bucks. So I really felt like I was begging and I felt bad and I hated doing this, but I went on Facebook and said, anybody out there who's been thinking of donating to the fiends today, would be a good day to do it. I need like 20 bucks. Here's why, you know, that would allow for PayPal fees. I said, I need like 20 bucks. Here's why and explained it. And, uh, Adam W, uh, did it. He went ahead and did it. So I sent him a bunch of buttons and some DVDs yeah. and whole bunch of stuff uh, free. Uh, one of the very last Right Arm Wyoming CD. You know, I sent him like over twenty dollars worth of stuff as a present, even though he wasn't expecting it. Um, nice. And that's not something I guarantee I'll do every time a fiend helps us, but that's the kind of stuff we do sometimes when we can afford it when people help us. So uh, thanks mm -hmm. to Adam W for saving Grandma's internet farm and uh, worms to you, man. 
worms. All right. We're going to yeah. talk more. Um, and once we get back from the break, I'm going to private message somebody here on the chat room. No, I'm just going to message. Can you private message somebody in the chat room? You can IM. I mean, it's not encrypted or anything, but yeah. You mm. can just click on their name, right? Click on their name. Left click on their name. Don't hit the ban. Don't ban them by accident. Just hit PM. Okay. Who are you going to talk to? Central Scrutinizer? No. Okay. None of your business. We're going All to right. break. Peace. Worms. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. Hey, yo, it's Freedom Fiends live, ho. Can I say ho? Ho, ho is like, you know, yeah, a, a yeah. garden tool, so I can say that. Yeah. You know, my... Yo, uh, Rake. My, what's up, Rake? What's up, Rake? My grandma-in-law once at a holiday party was like, Oh, yesterday I was just out hoeing all day long. <laughs> and I swear I couldn't help it. I just burst out <laughs> laughing. <laughs> And I felt, I didn't even feel bad, but my wife felt bad. So I guess I should feel some kind of remorse. But when somebody says I've been out hoeing all day, how can you not laugh? Can anybody yeah. not laugh? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm typing. I'm stealing time from the, the fiends. Um, yes, so I want to talk about my new podcast setup. <clears throat> well, the protection of it. Basically, what I, what I have is I have, I have about five tables in my room, like four in a line across one wall. One of them points mm-hmm. out the window. It's where my main computer is, so I can see the squ- squirrels being married. I mean, marry. And then there's one to the <laughs> left. And then there's one on my left that has my pod set up. It has my preamp, my mixer, my microphone stand, gooseneck. The uh, your pod. Sp- you just coined that. Is the place where you podcast at now? Pod. My pod. I think a word your got pod. cut off. I said pod, pod. setup. Uh, and oh, the two, okay. and then the computer I use for recording and mumble, and the computer I use to take Skype and phone calls. So, and that ah. stuff, like I pretty much don't use it any other time unless I'm recording some voiceover for the fiends. But it's like every time I would have to set everything up and plug it in. So mm-hmm. I just left it all set up, plugged it all into a separate um, power strip, so I could turn it all on with one switch. Ah, beautiful. and then yeah. And then covered it with a towel. I went and bought a really nice towel at Walmart, a huge, giant, really plush, dark colored uh, towel, black towel, Mm -hmm. dark, dark, Mm -hmm. dark blue, and just drape it over it. And immediately the cats went, oh, you built a place for us to sit. And you said that would (laughs) irritate you, but I kind of like it because I can't keep them off something. You know, it's like herding cats. So um, it happens to be a really good backdrop to photograph both our cats on. It's kind of like a professional photographer studio where they have, you know, things draped in the background. So I got some really good photos of Fuzzy up there sticking his tongue out. And I think I'll use one for today's cast, even though it has nothing to do with the name of today's cast. But I have noticed that the cast that have either hot chicks or cats in the picture. Get tend the most to get a clicks. Lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I, um, all of my podcast and music recording gear is all spirited away in a corner of the house that's closed off from everything else. Now, if the cats, there's there's like three layers of protection. There's like a bedroom door, and then there's a bathroom <laughs> door, and then there's a closet door. Sometimes the cats are diligent enough. Like whenever they're in a position to go in there when the door is open to my podcast or my pod, they, my they will pod zoom cat. in. You know, <laughs> it's vacuum. They will zoom in, and I will have to grab them by the scruff and be like, out of here. You know, but I, I, I cannot, I do not tolerate cats on my gear, man. Do your cats uh, ex- exhibit the ass vacuum yes, phenomenon yes. where you get up it, from a couch and before you can even turn around, they're sitting where in the, in the trench your ass made? More, more than anything, though, it's a pod vacuum. Whenever I open the door to my pod where I podcast. Well, I really liked, I really <laughs> liked your story. They are pod cats. I really liked your story about, uh, and we call podcasts podcasts or, hey, Nimi, you want a podcast now? I'll, you know, Skype you. I'll message you or pigeon you. Uh, I used to message you, but now I like pigeoning you because I can see when you're on online and it doesn't cost me 15 cents to send you a message, you know, and yeah. I'm not going to pay I guess, for. And that's the only thing I don't like about pigeon <laughs> is, it is, I, is I can tell when you're online. 
Yeah, man, I could be baiting, and Michael's like, hey, you there? I'm like, ah. <laughs> well, you can set it uh, very easily to away, but you have to remember to put it back when you're done baiting. And, and I don't. I just leave it on. Yeah. So. Yeah, I tend to it's get my you fault, you, my when, fault, but whatever. when you come home from work at three in the morning, all of a sudden you sit down, turn on your computer, and all of a sudden I'm like, hey, look at this cat picture. <laughs> yeah. And it's encrypted. So the NSA is like, what are they passing back and forth? Cat pictures. Yes. They drive yeah. the internet. But I really yeah, liked your story. You I really liked your story about, uh, which is what you should do. You should use encryption even for your cat photos. Because if you don't, if you only use it for things you don't want them to hear, you know, then it's kind of weird. But if everybody's using it all the time for even their cat pictures, it's uh, it's a normal thing. And it's normal. more like, you know, finding the needle in the uh, warehouse full of haystacks. Right, right. Normalize of the all good the behavior. <laughs> yeah. Normalize all the things. <laughs> so uh, I really liked how you talked about your cats seceding from the union where they you had, a, you had a room that was full of like furniture and, it, you know, you couldn't get in there. It was just full of old stuff, storage room. And the mm -hmm. cats like went and hid in the back of the room where you couldn't get to them <laughs> and just said, screw you guys. We're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> but wouldn't they come out the for thing, food and poo or would they? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they would. They would. And that's that's how we got them is eventually they had to come out. You know, they they couldn't. They weren't self-sufficient. You know, they had to depend on us for their food uh, and sustenance. So yep. Once they left, we just closed that door and said, ha, how's that for secession? Bitches. <laughs> Isolationism. Yeah. yeah. You know, speaking of uh, countries and things like that, I found out something interesting about iTunes because somebody posted a review on iTunes and sent it to me and it was a cool review for our podcast on iTunes. Uh, and they, and I, they said it didn't post yet, but it should post, you know, it says it'll post within a day. And then they wrote me about 12 hours later and said, Oh, it posted. And I went and looked and it wasn't there. And there've been a couple people who've written me and said that. And then what we figured out was that guy and the other people who I couldn't see their reviews are in Canada and iTunes segregates reviews by country. So if you're in America and you're logged in with an American account, you only see the American reviews. So you have to go to the little flag in the bottom right corner of iTunes store and click on it. And then you get options for all the other countries and you can see reviews, you know, like, like people are going to be offended by reading, really, you know, reading a Canadian review of some positive review of something they want to buy or take for free. What is that? What, yeah. What's that about? I, I don't know, but I know Steve that licensing... Ja Licensing uh, is different yeah. for all countries, so maybe it's related to that. Like maybe yeah. in the agreement they have with content producers, there was something. Well, we don't, you know, we don't even sell to that market, so they don't have any yeah. right to comment on it. <laughs> and maybe, maybe, maybe that's where it comes from. Steve Jobs made jail cool. That's what uh, he did. Richard, Richard but, Stallman said. But it's not just that; it's the whole state apparatus of having different geographical regions where you can. We have to have different rules. You have to set up a different agreement with different governments, and it can muck things up. Um, when I worked for a big e-commerce site and mostly what i did was tech stuff for um for a tablet type thing that they they sell content through um people would call and be like well i'm in this country how come i can't watch netflix how come i can't watch this show how come i can't watch that show and I'd be like you know it's not our fault that's the, which, that's the government that's the government which yeah. is why if you use a vpn and you're silly enough to use it for things you're logged in for which does identify you and kind of defeats a, a vpn uh, you should definitely get one that has your country as one of the options. Most people want to just go, oh, I want to look uh -huh. like I'm as far away as I can. But you ain't going to be able to watch Netflix unless if you're America, America, unless you're logged in through America. America. Right. Which why I'm so yeah. glad that that bowl of VPN now does have a an American routing for a VPN. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It makes everything so much easier. Um but yeah, man, uh, it's just really silly to me that there's all these arbitrary rules and, and the uninformed might blame it on corporations wanting to get more money for selling it in different places and, and exploiting different markets, but they can't do that without the force of the state. So look at the cause of the problem, not the symptom. So speaking of the force of the state, look at the first link I just sent you. It's about the beginning of uh, intellectual property laws, the Statute of ah. Anne which was an act of the Great Parliament of Britain, the first to stat statute to provide for copyright regulation by government and courts rather than by private parties. 1710. So that's when it all went downhill. And really, I mean, do you want to like run your life by something that was invented by a bunch of old poofters wearing white powdered wigs? Hell which no. is how they Hell still no. dress. You know, have you ever seen Law and Order UK? 
It's really Ugh. funny. Is it's that a thing? Is that yes. a thing? I thought it was. Yeah. I found it channel surfing, and I thought I was watching a Saturday Night Live skit <laughs> because it looked just like Law and Order. It had the bink bink at the beginning of each segment, dung, dung. and yeah. <clears throat> but in the first like two seconds or ten seconds of watching it, they used like every British slang that I could imagine you'd use in a parody. Like, well, put on your pullover and we'll take the lift to the, you know, just like, <laughs> like come on, man. We'll this put is some bangers in our mouth before tea. Yes, yes, yes. And then they showed a courtroom scene and it was like, you know, everybody was wearing the white wigs. And I'm like, they don't really do that. This has got to be a joke. And DJ's like, no, <laughs> no. The judges and, and the barristers, right? The attorneys, DJ, wear the wigs. The look. Yeah, barristers or lawyers. Yeah, the lawyers and the judges. And one of them was right. like a black dude. And I was like, wow, that looks really funny, man. A well, black dude in America, wearing a white they, they don't wear the wig. wigs, but in America, they still wear the dresses. So <laughs> Yeah, and they still have all of the all of the BS that came from the British court system. Right. right. Like, a judge. Your honor. All right. More judging of the judge. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network. A collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Yo, is your property? Yo. Yo. What the do? What it do, what does it do? I think that's the correct way to say it. So, we are back on Freedom Fiends Live, and we've got things to talk about, ideally. So, uh, what do you want to go for first, Mr. Dean? Why is the U.S. government planning for mass fatalities? It's a good question, and this has been talked about before. Um, There's a FEMA, is it a bill? Yeah, I guess it's a bill. And it's FEMA and Homeland Security basically laying out how they're going to to prepare for... uh, the bill title is Mass Fatality Planning and Religious Considerations Act. So yeah. uh, I guess what it is is them working with clergy members and people like that to figure out what to do if there are mass emergency deaths and mm-hmm. uh, how the clergymen can you know, say rights to all these people before they throw them in a mass grave uh, or whatever it is. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I, I heard Ben Stone talk about it, and he was saying, well, this is kind of just what they do. It doesn't necessarily mean they're planning anything horrible, but uh, it's the government, you know, um, I guess, I, I, I don't know, I guess just preparing to, to be in there whenever any emergency happens, you know, making sure that every contingency the government has their finger on the pulse of and their hand on it because they want to control every aspect of life. So it couldn't be, it's not necessarily something like we're planning to kill everybody and this is how we're going to deal with it. That's it how a lot just, of people took it, though. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I don't know, maybe there's do. something more more to that, but uh, I mean, it, there's also something to be said for the fact that what FEMA does and what Homeland Security does is they it's presume good for that they are... FEMA is what well, FEMA does is right for America. <laughs> well, they, they presume they're the masters <laughs> of the universe, and they, they assume that if anything wrong happens, they should make sure that, that their foot's in the door first and that they get to run the show. Um, that That's that's their libido dominandi, right? That's their power well, lust. Which is interesting so, because the whole idea of FEMA or planning to do this and that kind of came out of some talk uh, around the time that they emerged from the civil defense uh, planning people, which are the people that made those, you know, funny little uh, duck and cover videos or you know, movies <laughs> in the 60s that were shown to me and DJ to yes. terrify your, us your, as par- your particle board desk will protect you from, yeah. from a massive nuclear <laughs> explosion. <laughs> yeah, which is really, I mean, talk about security theater. I mean, that's a lot more low tech than uh, $100,000 backscatter scanning, but it's the same idea. It's the idea that, oh, the government will keep you safe. This is the did, same did government. Did desk that- manufacturers back then have like natural 
national defense lines that had like lead in, probably, in them. No, they probably <laughs> funded that organization though or had lobbyists uh-huh. to get that to happen. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, General about- Electric Desk will protect, <clears throat> protect you from any nuclear attack. Okay, Jack, that's a nice story, but I don't hear my name in it. But Michael yeah, Mark. it came out of like discussions on the early, you know, like sovereign, not sovereigns, but patriot movement, you know, in the early 90s on the internet or before the web even on chat groups of like, well, this thing FEMA is coming out and it seems like it would be poised to deliver the tyranny. So they kind of developed out of that. I mean, I really think all aspects of government are going to be initiating tyranny in any kind of shice hits the fan situation but you know everyone Mm -hmm. thinks fema is the big bad wolf but i don't know man i think the national guard and the local cops are just as much of a threat to if not more to your uh to your life and freedom yeah and they're closer to you and they have guns i mean there's people just down the street you know government guns in a town like casper they probably know your name (laughs) Mm -hmm. they probably Mm -hmm. know where, where the weirdos live so and they yeah, know where this, you live. They know your name. Yeah. But the lady who is, uh, they did, this lady did put forth a bill of like, we need to steal a bunch of government money to, uh, figure out how to bury everyone with proper religious respect. If millions of people die in America, Laura Richardson, who is a really scary kind of, um, definition, dictionary definition of nanny, nanny, nanny. Democrat. She's a U.S. representative of California's 37th congressional district, Long Beach, Compton, Signal Hill, well, LBC, Carson. LBC, baby. Well, she's yeah. the dog's representative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she convinced him to become yeah. state lion. Yeah, she's really anti-gun. She's really uh, pro. Uh, she's not very pro-weed, actually, which is kind of weird, but pro-gay marriage, uh, pro-welfare, pro, you know, everything. Everything we don't like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, so uh, do you got more to say on that? Well, she's also pro NDAA. Uh, mm. She voted for that. Um, you know, an interesting thing I heard uh, when listening to Scott Horton was um, Obama has yet to veto an NDAA, even though he would have to veto it in order to do things like close Guantanamo because there's clauses in the NDAA that basically uh, keep Guantanamo alive. Um Whereas Obama still goes on things like John Stewart and still says it's his goal. Well, yeah, right. All you have to do is veto the damn NDAA if you're going to do anything towards that. Uh, George Bush actually apparently did veto an NDAA. So even George Bush had the balls to veto one of these things. Because every year there's an NDAA and each year there's horrible things in it. Laura um, Richardson, uh, who is the inventor of this bill of we need to know how to bury millions of Americans – uh, with proper religious respect after we cause them to die somehow. Um, she also supported building 40,000 more prison beds in California at the cost of $7.4 billion. Mm. And she also voted for a controversial update on the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act that would uh, allow Americans to be spied on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. Yeah. She is just awful. She, awful. she is really beyond she's even beyond just nanny democrat she is nanny democrat that wants everyone controlled and spied on and thrown in prison Mm. although who doesn't agree with her or doesn't do what why do we really have to single out one person here i mean i feel like the whole congress is complicit in this well i think that this bill didn't if you want to talk in minarchist patriot kind of stuff which we'll put on that hat for a minute even though mine is like under a pile of cat fur somewhere. I haven't put it on in so long. Um, I think she was the only, only person that uh, backed this bill. Was she introduced it? Was she the, I mean, she can't be the only person to have voted for it. Did, did they even vote on it? I don't know, man. I don't know. know more there's a lot of, a, there's a lot of, we don't care. <laughs> Does the, the thing that we don't believe should exist and we're trying to imagine into not existing. How does it work? <laughs> we should know the innermost workings of everything it does. No, we shouldn't. That's <laughs> it. yeah. it's not really square. It's just, man, there's only so much room for so much math in my head. And, you know, using the 3d printable, uh, the 3D printer hooked up to my brain to print lib pair takes a lot of computational power. Twenty four. You, you don't have the resources to give to to pointing to direct action on Congress because everything no. they do is evil. That's that's all you have to do is say everything they do is is evil. Yeah. Why should I? But some consider stuff the morality just, of each different act. Some stuff just sounds 
enough more evil than others that I want to pick it out and make fun of it like this. And that's all I got to say, because I want to go on to kite photography, which is pretty damn awesome. It's basically like your own drone without uh, licensing or the expense, you know, it's taking pictures from kites and there is some really awesome stuff on this site. I'm going to link it and uh, people can enjoy falling down this wormhole with us of kite photography. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing stuff. So I guess the concept is you have a kite and you strap a digital camera to it, right? Yep. How do and you? I, um, some of this was done even you, pre-digital. Like, how do you oh, trigger really? it? How do you trigger yeah. it? That's what um, I was going to ask. Yeah. Actually, there's a way to do it by take one shot by melting an ice cube and then the string is released. But I'm sure that there's other ways to do it, radio controlled or timed or whatever. Now with digital, timed, I mean, that's what I was digital thinking. camera, you can just set it up to take enough pictures and pictures in a row until it. Until it stops taking pictures, pretty much. Until it runs out of memory. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. We'll have more Freedom Fiends coming up after we sell some things. Photography. Kitephotography.com. Yeah. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7-365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. Oh, Worm. it's Freedom Fiends Live. We are a call-in show, but we have not given out the number, and I don't even know if you had the thing on, but um, I guess we could do that now. we only got two seconds yeah, left. go ahead. Go ahead and give us a call at 307-215-5171 if you've got things you want to talk about. Um... Did you want to continue on kite photography, or do you Just want to move that on? It's really, really cool. And uh, you mentioned someone taking a photograph from space for not that much money. Yeah, I think we talked about that on the cast before. Uh, there was a group of, I don't know if they were college kids or, or teenagers in high school or something, but uh, for a lark, they floated up uh, a digital camera in an apparatus uh, to the atmosphere, like through the atmosphere, into in a pretty much low Earth orbit, and uh, took a picture of of the earth that looked like you know one of those nasa pictures from space uh spent like two hundred dollars on it and then they got this amazing set of photographs of earth uh and yeah. they're like yeah didn't take any government funding just some kids on 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 a lark or having fun you know uh we don't need nasa screw nasa is i guess the point of that story um also uh i I listened to a set of podcasts yesterday that I felt was really good for this time of year since it's, uh, you know, December 7th was a few days ago and day that we'll live in infamy. Why is um, that? The, what's, is that your birthday? December 7th? Yes, that's my birthday. No, oh, what is it? Uh, Pearl Harbor. You, you know, you don't, you're not up on oh. that part of status propaganda. Oh, the, uh, the, the 1940s. Why would, why would my birthday be the day to live in infamy? <laughs> I'm a birther, man. I'm a birther. I don't believe that. Uh, I think that was all an inside job. I mean, not a birther, a truther. <laughs> I don't a know truther if I'm about. a truther. I don't know if I'm a truther about 9/11, but I, I think something was wrong with the official story, and I think that it was caused by U.S. actions, if not caused by the U.S. Well, but well, World it, War II. I mean, the the bombing of uh, Pearl Harbor. Isn't there a big theory that uh, I subscribe to that maybe that was a false flag operation done by the U.S. or allowed? Maybe allowed would be the word, and and it's it's not even contested in in higher. Circles I've seen that on of, like of academia. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that on like Discovery Channel. You know, right, right. So, so the really smart status now they don't they don't deny it because it's it's really not deniable anymore. What they do is they say, well, uh, FDR did the right thing. He lied to America, but it's like a doctor lying to the patient in order to save his health. Uh, so the really smart status in academia uh, don't disagree with the fact that FDR knew it was coming and to some extent provoked it. Um, if you want the Liberty take on this, though, uh, listen to, to Ben Stone as, as part four of a series he's done on war was about uh, Pearl Harbor. And, and then 
uh, it seems like everybody did a bit on this. Not only did he do it, but then uh, Lou Rockwell actually interviewed um, John Denson for a, a Lou Rockwell show. I think his name's John Denson. I don't know. Denson's the last name, but he's a guy who wrote, wrote a book called Century of War, which uh, I think Ben got a lot of, of his source material from either that book or other books by John Denson. And so those two, like in a row, if you listen to them, you, you sort of get a really good picture of, uh, of Pearl Harbor and how it happened. Basically, and, and I sort of knew this, but it was, it was nice to get the de- more details on it. Um, basically, the Americans had been embargoing uh, Jap- the Japanese for a lot of their important materials, uh, kind of like what America is doing to Iran now. They, they, they implemented an embargo. The Japanese couldn't get oil anymore. They couldn't get rubber. They couldn't get uh, like steel. They couldn't get anything they needed for, um, for industry. Now, of course, Japan was using all of these things for their evil empire. So, yeah, there's that. But, but the Japanese were in a position where they felt like they could either lose their empire um, through America starving them to death by, by embargoing them, or they could try to hit America really hard and see if America would back off. And, and a lot of the people in, in Japanese parliament didn't think that it would work, but they felt like they had nothing else to do. Um, what what uh, FDR actually did was he set up the situation to where uh, the Japanese would attack us at a point to where it wouldn't hurt our military capabilities. What he did is he got all the battleships together in Pearl Harbor, which is a horrible harbor to defend. It's basically like a, a gooseneck and then a big thing. And he also had all the planes pushed together so that the planes could all get blown up so he could say that that happened. And, and meanwhile, all the carrier groups, which naval warfare at that time didn't even need battleships in the old sense. They, they, he put all the old battleships, all the ones that they, they wanted to get rid of for scrap metal anyway, were the ones that got destroyed at Pearl Harbor. He meanwhile had his carrier group strategically placed in good positions so they wouldn't be attacked. And he had uh, Wake Island and Midway Island fortified uh, because he knew the Japanese were coming. Meanwhile, he left Port Pearl Harbor completely undefended. Um, so it, it was pretty much set up to where Pearl Harbor would be attacked and then and an FDR could go to war with Japan and Germany at the same time. You know what fact I really like about the Navy? What DJ's dad is a Navy vet, and many years ago, when Old Navy, the store first started, DJ took her dad to it, and he was really disappointed that they weren't a Navy surplus store. <laughs> He's like, "There's no nice. Old Navy clothes in here. False nice. advertising." <laughs> someone just called. Someone just basically called me a preppy in the uh, in the chat room, Abby. I said we we're talking about where we we're from, and I said that uh, I used to. I was from. Westfield, New York, and I used to summer in Chautauqua, and she said, "Your class summer? is showing you if you use summer. summer <laughs> if you use summer as a verb." That's very true. Yeah, <laughs> summer. But I went to a prep summers. school. I'm literally a preppy, so yeah. yeah yes, Biff and Biff and Cliff and Trent and I would summer in Chautauqua. <laughs> Actually, I, I knew a guy named Biff, and I knew a guy named Trent at wow, uh, my, my prep school. Yeah, I'm sorry. And I'm a guy sorry. named Trip. It was somebody, somebody, the, thir- the third, Douglas Arthur Hillsinger. What was it that somebody said about my band Bomb? The, the one where we put all the credits, we used our full names with middle names on the credits, and it was like Michael Wareham Dean, Douglas Arthur Hillsinger, J. Morgan Crawford, and someone said, is this a yacht club or a band? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yeah, Wareham sort of gives you away, doesn't it? Yeah, although uh, Tony Fagg, well, he used his full name, which was uh, Anthony... Paul Anthony Michael Fagat- Small. Fagato. No, small, oh, okay. but it's yeah, it's actually. Would have been funnier if it were some like Italian Fagato. word with fag. Fagato. Well, he is Italian. He's Italian and Filipino, so Fagato. That'd be funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What does this have to do with liberty? Where is the non-aggression principle in all this? Well, well, I, I was talking about FDR lying us cares, into war. Who cares, man? You wanted to talk about Biff. <clears throat> I want to talk about Biff it, and it, Trent and know, Brent. Here, here's why I care. And, and, and I. And I had this discussion earlier before we did today's show is my, my mother-in-law was like, well, we should go see a movie. I was thinking about seeing Lincoln. And my wife was like, don't bring Ew. up Lincoln. Don't bring up Lincoln. <laughs> and then I went off on it. And she's like, well, I who cares? It's a movie. Just like you're saying now. And the, the point is. Well, it'd be like watching a movie are, about how great Hitler was. I don't want to do yeah, that but, either. But, but these these are the myths. That why, why she, and the mother-in-law was like, yeah, well, you're probably right. And, and maybe I don't believe the bu- bullshit. But it's a movie. I just want to be entertained. The problem is, is that it's a, it's a myth. Mythology and, and the state. When when we argue that the state is mythology and we have to change the mindsets, we'll never do that if we let it's, these myths uh, keep 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 perpetuating. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Never do it's kind of hard to be a libertarian or an anarchist or a freedom fiend and enjoy a lot of media, especially historical type media, because 
you know, I can I can use suspension of disbelief. Like I can watch a cartoon where, you know, there's flying robots, but uh well, I guess we have that anyway, but you know, where there's a flying robot named Bender and he's your friend. I can suspend my disbelief for that. But I can't suspend my disbelief of morality. You can't suspend can, your the, the disbelief of statism. Yeah, I can't like go, yeah. "Oh, yes, Lincoln, I can forget that he killed more Americans than Hitler and didn't have to." To yeah. end something that was ending anyway, you know. Well, well, to me, that's the point, and that's why when you say, "Why? Who cares? Why does that matter?" Because you you never convince people if you don't get rid of the the origin myths of the state. The origin myth of the state is the root of it, and and, and anything else we do, we're just hacking at the symptoms of it, and and we're yeah. we're falling into the same trap that that all other people who try to change things fall into, is you have to ex- you have to do what Ben Stone says and pull pull the hair and, and let them yak out their statism, and we're not going to get them sick enough to yak. Yak, unless we we explain to them that FDR was a murderer, so Lincoln, Lincoln was a murderer, yeah. and then we pull back their hair so they can yak out the status. Yeah, that, and that's really important. Not only not only a murderer, but a murderer who didn't have to murder to do. You know, people say, "Well, it was worth it because we had to kill all those bad Southerners because they wanted slavery." And it's like, no, slavery was on its way out anyway, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, with the FDR thing, okay, it's not just that he was a murderer, but he, those people at Pearl Harbor, the people who died in the attack. They were expendable to him. He knew the attack yeah. was coming. They he were Americans the who were expendable. They a guy who bait. said, a guy who said America, you know, a guy who believed that American, who presented the belief that Americans are more valuable than anyone else, who would just use some as bait to murder, to allow to be yep. murdered, to get his way, yeah. to go kill more people and sell more bombs. Man, it was the beginning of the military industrial complex, really. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Or at least the beginning of it growing to this giant, horrible thing that it is now. Uh, but we'll, we'll have more, and, and hopefully we'll a, have some redemption in the third act. To where there's a Coming drone up. over my house, literally. Yeah, yeah, literally. Not your house, though. Not yet. Not that you know of. You're listening to the Freedom Fiends podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com. And we are back. This is Nima Vendati. On the other end of the microphone, we got Michael W. Dean. And uh, we got our last segment here, so we're just going to talk and let it ride out to the end. <laughs> we what never gave Michael? out the number. I just turned off the uh, phone computer so people cannot call. Uh, I gave Screw it out in the last segment. I just gave it out in the last segment. Screw them. Right. Screw, Screw our listeners. No, with kindness. Screw them with kindness. When In a good way. F Make them, love to know, our listeners. F them is like a good thing, you know? Yeah. Someone wants you to get mm. some. It, it, it's a good thing if you want to be effed. Yeah. 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 If not, then it's rape them. But uh, nobody ever Ew. says that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Buzzkill. Feds fire warning shot over pot legalization. Yeah. What was their warning shot? Let's see. It looks like uh, U.S. Attorney Jenny A. Durkin, Durkin, Durkin of Washington Durkin, warned Durkin, residents Durkin. that that growing, selling, or possessing any amount of marijuana remains illegal under federal law. Is basically what she said in that Daria tone, uh, or that Daria's I, stupid I, friend tone. I, I swear, man, federal attorneys are like the most square of the most tyrannical of all the people. They really are. I mean, they're the guys that like entrapped the coolest guy in the world when i when i was a kid the coolest guy in the world was teaching chong they were the coolest guys in the world she went out of her way to like falsely arrest him you know or one of them mm-hmm. did they're all interchangeable to me I, I would say not only federal attorneys but any government attorneys which is is where most prosecutors are like prosecutors are usually called like county attorneys it's what people want to be uh, district I mean, they, attorneys you know, people aspire in law school to become that it's a it's a good cushy tax eater job where you get you always get to win pretty much yeah and it's a horrible horrible thing like their philosophy is often well if they're innocent it'll come out on appeal they go balls don't care about facts of a case they just want they just want to throw people in jail is all they want did you see that thing where that there was a college football coach and um he had taken naked baby pictures and video of his kids or, or his kids had done it on his phone and it wasn't really kitty porn or anything it's just you know, kids are kids. Naked, taking a bath, taking a bath, 
right? That's what kids do is they take baths naked because they don't wear bathing suits to bathe. Who does? And, and somebody saw his phone and saw that and reported it to the county attorney or the prosecutor. And, and the guy pretty much lost his job. He's in suspension. I don't know if he got it back. Uh, luckily, the judge was like, this is ridiculous. This is just family photos. But the prosecutor still didn't apologize. The prosecutor was still like, well, we're, we're, si we're, we're trying to enforce the law here. And the law is that you can't take naked pictures of kids. So this is the kind of mentality of prosecutors who end up becoming U.S. attorneys. So they don't care about actual morality or how things work. All they care about is is looking tough and, and, and enforcing the law as they see it. I was talking to someone recently who works in a law firm that does a lot of uh, criminal defense. You know, people have been arrested. They call this kind of lawyer. Um, mm -hmm. And I said, what percentage of the cases you handle – you know, are the, the people that you're defending who are in jail, what percentage of them have committed actual crimes, you know, like assault, theft, fraud, et cetera. And the, any thought and he was like pretty close to zero, you know, it's all, mm -hmm. it's all drug stuff. It's all possession of a gun that they're not allowed to have because they're on probation or something. I mean, they may mm -hmm. have done something else. They may be on probation for assault or something, but whatever it is, like, pretty close to 100% of what this guy said his firm does, and this is pretty common in that kind of defense law, is none of it is real crimes. Like, none of it is stuff that would exist in lib pair as a crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Although, I, I guess... I guess it's good that, that the feds, at least lower level feds like federal attorneys are starting to push back against this because it shows their hand for what they really are. They're, they're literally not giving a crap about the consent of the governed. The governed, even if you believe in democracy, oh, the about governed. The pot thing. You're talking about the pot thing. Yeah. Yeah. Back, back to the pot thing. Yeah. Uh, the governed have stated that they think it's fine if you want to smoke a frickin' joint. Yeah. Like nationally, and, and more than 50% of people polled believe that pot should be legal right. or not right. as illegal as it is right and these people went through the process right you know there are those old status that are like well if you don't like the law don't break it just <laughs> go through the process and change it right well they did they, that. Did. they, they spent did 20 that. years doing that and finally a few states have two states have legalized it and the feds are like oh no that doesn't count <laughs> yeah, yeah that doesn't, no no you can't you gotta that, change our but you gotta change our system too which is like the federal system is so heavily weighed against the people and against i mean it most of it you know occasionally they'll do something where they'll make a big thing of like oh we busted an actual child pornography ring where they were you know kidnapping children or you know where pe women are being forced into prostitution or where people were stealing credit cards and stealing identities but that's really rare what they generally trot out as their successes is we found this guy with a bunch of guns and he is uh on parole for a bunch of weed so he can't have guns mm -hmm. you know and they'll they'll say that's one, the guy that's our governor now in wyoming that's supposed to be so pro-gun he bragged about that as a as a federal attorney and he yeah. also oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know everyone voted him in like oh he says he'll protect our gun rights what he's doing right now is he's trying to raise the tax on on gasoline 10 cents a gallon which really you know i mean it's a very driving state you have to do a lot of driving if you live or work here if you're not me and uh you know that's really going to cripple people and it's gonna pass i mean there's no like there, there there's no consent of the government in it at all yeah yeah. So I, I guess that's the good thing here. The second good thing is it helps to set the precedent for, um, for like you said, the battle, the showdown between states and the federal government, um, which, you know, states are still states. They're still tyrannical governments. But it sets that precedent of the smaller jurisdiction fighting the bigger jurisdiction. Hopefully, eventually, we can move that to where the individual is fighting against their city government and, and their state government and the federal government. And we can all believe in individual rights rather than state rights i mean why do you have to have a collective group to have rights it's just ridiculous <laughs> you know it's interesting that uh like for instance the guy that does the 10th amendment center podcast he's getting a lot of um play now like he's getting a lot of attention and i'm not saying like that is rightfully ours but it's kind of like you know i mean he's literally on the watch list of the southern poverty law center because he's like we must enforce the 10th amendment and states rights over federal rights and you and i are like so much more anti-government i guess than he i mean it's it's not even anti-government it's like ugh, government it's like non-government <laughs> than him that like where's where's our page on the southern poverty law centers but it's like it doesn't even count it's like if you're an anarcho-capitalist you're like 
oh, they don't even believe in the system. They're not even worth talking about. It's, they're not a threat. The ones that are a threat are the ones that are getting voters to look at, you know, lawmakers to look at the, the Tenth Amendment. It's, 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 it's because my name sounds foreign and their whole narrative is they're all fat, middle-aged white men yeah. that are racist. Yeah. That's, that's the real reason they believe these ways. It yeah, doesn't well, fit their narrative. I'm a fat, middle-aged <laughs> white guy who owns a bunch of guns and doesn't <laughs> like the government. Where's my, where's my page? I don't know. Here, well, I'll turn you into the to the Southern Poverty Law Center, and we'll see what they say. Well, you can do that. Somebody else turned us into the <laughs> White House, which I didn't really think was prudent in any way. I mean, I'm not going to not talk to that guy, but I'm like, you know, he turned the Obama's feet stink video into the White House through their snitch on your neighbor's link. And uh, I was – the thing is, like, that's not going to get us uh, any publicity like it would with the Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, the What they could do is just get it taken quietly taken off YouTube, which didn't happen, but – you know, really, I mean, you you want you don't help us by saying, "Hey, White House goons hired off a pizza box, check out the Freedom Fiends." No, you you tell yeah. other people that are that 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 might have questions about the validity of government about the Freedom Fiends. That's how you help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you just turn me into the Southern Poverty Law Center, so <laughs> I will. I You're will. a good American. <laughs> You're a good patriot. <laughs> I'm a good Merkin. Merkin. Say Merkin. <clears throat> two two syllables. Mer- yeah. Can. Are you yeah. are you a Merkin or are you a Mercant? You know, speaking of gonna- non governmental things, uh, I kind of want to take people to task on Facebook who, on, for their anarchist group or a small government group, list from the drop down menu on Facebook the type of organization as non governmental organization or NGO. Unless you're doing that because you know what an NGO is and think it's funny, um, an anarchist group is not an NGO. It's pretty much the opposite. An NGO is basically an arm of the United Nations. That is, it's not a part of a government, but it's part of the United Nations that influences government. It's kind of like a think tank for uh, making government more oppressive and more one worldy. So it, it's stop kind of, it's using a group that, who wants man. to. It's a, it's a group who wants to influence the government and do things that the government doesn't have the resources or time to do. <laughs> they, they want to basically impose things. And, and I don't know, I guess a lot of times that there's sort of a charity aspect to them or they, they portray them as that way. But uh, in general, I think they end up just mucking things up because it's top down changes. It's, it's like a white man's burden kind of thing is how I read it. Yeah. So NGOs and, and are one of the complaints I've seen about NGOs, you know, from people who actually believe there should be some government even, and I would agree with this too, is that NGOs, and this goes back to the white man's burden thing, they often have no, have no physical contact with the underprivileged people they're supposed to be representing. Like they're, they're literally like eggheads who sit in an office and analyze spreadsheets and then try to get the uh, UN to point its guns in the right direction to make states a- add more laws. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't need none of that. So, it's been be a good warned. Fiends. It's been a good be fiends, warned. man. Been a good fiends. Yeah, it's been a good fiends. Good fiends. And yeah. we're out. Peace. Reducing my carbohydrate footprint of the state until it will drown itself in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs>